Now, if you've clicked on this video and you're an experienced mix engineer, then you probably already understand this technique. However, you can still be of help to the rest of the community by dropping in the comments down below anything that I may have missed out or any techniques that you know that can also help the people click in on this video. Now, if you have clicked on this video, then it's more than likely that you struggle with EQ. And I'm gonna try my best in this video to give you a simple technique that absolutely changed the game for me personally. Let's jump straight into this. First things first, the EQ of choice today is Pro-Q Free. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is listen to the tracks that are competing with each other and identify which is the core instrument, which is the main focus within this bunch of sounds. For me, the main focus in this section is the choir. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to load up the EQ on the choir and I'm actually going to cut. I'm not going to boost. I'm going to cut the choir until I feel like the choir disappears. And I'll explain to you why I'm doing that in a moment. Now for me, I've immediately identified the frequency that is the most important. Because remember, the first thing I did is I decided what instrument is the core instrument. And then I've selected that instrument and now I've EQ'd out the most important frequency. How do I know it's the most important frequency? Very simply, because it's disappeared and I can't hear it no more. Now this is the simplicity of this. I'm now going to take that EQ and I'm simply going to drag it to the other instruments that were clashing. So very simply, it's gonna be cutting the most important frequency in the choir out of the other instruments. So you can immediately hear that that choir is now in focus and I haven't actually done any addictive EQ yet. Now at this point, if you're finding this helpful, you know what to do, make sure to hit the like button and drop a comment down below. Now the next thing I'm going to do is find which sound has the body or the low end or the weight to it. And it's going to be these low strings. I'm going to do a low shelf until I start to feel that low end disappear. Now around about there, that's where the low end is starting to disappear. So I'm now going to take this setting and apply it to the other instruments. I'm at 306 Hertz and I'm dropping it by around about seven to eight dB. If you want a quick tip for creating a shelf, if you double click around this area, it will give you a high pass filter. But if you click and drag up around this area, it will automatically give you a shelf. So where was it? It was around 300 and we're gonna drop it by around about that amount. And we're going to take that and do the same thing on these strings as well. And right now, all we're doing is identifying the key frequencies and just eliminating them from the other instruments because the goal is to make space and to make sure everything is sitting within its pocket. And then once I've done that, I'll go back to the instrument which had the bass in it and I'm actually going to take the same settings but just boost it a little bit. Now I'm going to bypass it. Now 
Now, of course, I've done very simple and basic settings, but this has enabled me to get into the ballpark of how I want things to sound. And then after this, I can go in, I can fine tune, I can decide, you know what? This is taking out a bit too much. Let me bring a little bit of this back. Maybe the cue's too wide. Let me narrow it down a little bit. But in order to just make those quick, broad stroke decisions, this technique has been an absolute game changer for me. Now, notable mention within Pro Q3, you do have the masking feature. So if you have several different EQs within your mix, you'll see in red, the frequency spectrum of the other instrument you selected will actually appear. However, for me personally, I prefer to just use this technique because the human psychology is we find it easier to identify what's missing and when something's gone than when something's been added or when there's something new. If I was to boost the frequency very quickly, that sound is going to sound unpleasant. For example, Now, that is the actual frequency that I want to prioritize and bring focus to, but in boosting it, it's actually made me feel uncomfortable. And now I'm going to think, I don't really like that frequency. Is that really the one I want to focus on? Which is why I love to just play the mix in its entirety and cut out the frequency until it disappears. Because regardless of how I feel something sounds in solo, in isolation, when I'm EQing in a mix and I'm cutting and that sound disappears, I know no matter what my opinion is, that is the most important frequency in that sound. And I absolutely need to make sure that everything else is getting out of the way of that instrument. Just a simple technique today. You can apply it to anything. If you've got competing hi-hats, if you've got a competing kick drum with a bass, you can apply this. If you're struggling to identify what do I boost, what do I cut, I would say start with cutting until your favorite part of the sound disappears and then take that setting and use that as the basis to carve out frequencies in all of the competing instruments. And if you want to boost something, you don't know what to boost. Same with a kick drum, cut out the kick drum until the energy in the body of the kick drum just disappears. You know, okay, this is the frequency that's absolutely important. I need to make sure that this is cut out of any competing instruments. For the few people who are looking to train their ears, whilst learning to mix and you don't want to be reliant on visual analyzers, then I'll really urge you to try this technique out. Also, if you're loving the sound of these choirs, then be sure to check out my review video above. Only £29, absolutely incredible. I think you'll enjoy them. My name is Alex Elliott. If you like this kind of content, you know what to do, like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.